Hello my little butterflies and this video is going to be about how to escape the reading slump of Saurus. So you guys I know a lot of people have done videos on how to get out of reading slumps but I don't think a lot of people have actually gone into detail about how you escape a reading slump of Saurus. So you know what I'm going to sit here today and I'm going to show you guys and I'm, well, I'm going to tell you guys how to escape and survive a reading slump of Saurus. Now everyone knows these are very, very dangerous creatures, okay? So don't go looking for them, okay? Like they are very dangerous, all right? They will attach themselves to you and they will drag you down, all right? Do not, I repeat, do not go out and search for a reading slump of Saurus, okay? So number one, if you ever catch yourself in the midst of a reading slump of Saurus, one thing that you can do that will really help your situation is Netflix and chill. The PG version, okay? The PG version of Netflix and chill. You know, a lot of people feel like if you're in a reading slump, you just need to read, read, read more and put yourself to read and put yourself to read and put yourself to, yourself to read. That's not smart. It's okay. You, body, sometimes you just get tired of reading. And it's alright. It's nothing to be ashamed of. We all get tired of reading sometimes. Especially if you're like over reading and like tiring yourself out with reading. Just go and It's okay to watch a bunch of movies and binge watch, you know, a bunch of TV shows. That'll help you. That helps your mind to relax and it helps your body to relax. That right there could just make you feel like a whole new person after you're done. You know, relax. Watch some Netflix. Take some naps on the sofa or whatever, you know. Just chill out. It's gonna, it, a relaxed mind is the best thing ever. And you don't ever want to feel like you're stressed and you push to read. Just chill. The second thing that you can do is watch BookTube. Look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Look at this. I don't know if it works, if it's, if this works this way for everyone, but for me, I feel like when I watch a bunch of booktube videos or I'm watching people talk about books, it makes me want to read. Like, it makes you inspire. Oh, I need to go read because that sounds really, really good. You know, it makes you feel like you need to go and pick something up and read. You know, it inspires you. It, like, it motivates you. It gives you that extra energy, you know? When, that's what it seems like it feels like when I'm watching booktube videos. Like, every night, it could be midnight and I'm watching booktube videos. It makes me want to fucking read. And I'm like, it's ice midnight. I need to go to sleep. But it makes me want to read. But that is definitely one thing you can do. I don't know if it works that way for everyone, but I know it works that way for me. Number three is switching books. Drop whatever it is you're reading <laughs> and run away. Run away to something else. Now, I know it's just said. A lot of people tell you to read, read, read. But just listen to me. Hear me out. Sometimes when you're reading a book, and it's not what you thought it was going to turn out to be. You might be halfway through, but you're not liking it. And you always have to keep telling yourself and forcing yourself, come on, it might get better, let's finish the book. Or you just might be forcing yourself to read. It might not necessarily be in your mind. You might think it might get better. You just want to finish it. So you're trying to make yourself finish it. I used to be embarrassed to say that I DNF books, okay? I used to be. Not anymore. Because... I just can't force myself to finish reading and I feel like if I try to force myself to read a book it makes you depressed and it makes you not want to read for a while and I've experienced that because I have sit here and I have tried to like force myself to read a book and that was you and you wasn't a bad book but I got tired I don't like in a book where something is completely being re re repeated and repeated and repeated and it's just over and over again it's like okay that just happened because then you know what's going to happen again it's like oh my god he's going to do this and then this is going to happen I'm so sick that I don't like books like that. So I did. I don't know if I might, I might go back and try to finish it. I don't know. But it just it disappointed me because I thought it was going to be really good how people were saying. It was really hyped up. And that just goes to show you that books that are really hyped up aren't always for everyone. Because I don't think it was for me. I might go back later on down the road and try to read it again. But not so sure. You know, just sometimes you have to just face that maybe you're just not into what you're reading and it's okay to break up with a book sometimes you know it's all right it's not anything on you this look i don't know how to say this to you you know and i don't want to come off like a jerk but i don't think this is going to work out um it's not you it's me i just i don't think i'm ready for this kind of relationship i don't think this relationship is for me 
and I think I kind of rushed into it, you know, and it's just not, it's not nothing personal. I just, I just, I don't, I don't like your personality, you know, I don't like what's on the inside of you. And, um, hopefully we can fix that later in the future, but right now I don't, I don't see a future with us. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. So, the fourth thing that you can do to escape a reading slump of sorts is to just, you know, read a graphic novel. Because, see, sometimes you might just get tired of reading, a, you know, thick books and lengthy books. You might just want to read something just quick and short and, like, simple and just something sweet, straight to the point. You might not want to read, you know, a full-blown book, you know, a full-blown novel. You might not want to read that face it we all get tired sometimes of reading you know thick and long books i'm the same way if i read a 500 page book today i kind of want to take a book a break from you know long lent books and maybe i just want to read like 200 lent pages so um, i might want to get a 100 lent page book and throw it in there you know but you need to take a break because otherwise you're going to you know tire yourself out and that's usually how the reading slump of stars catches you that's usually how it happens so and so just you know go to the library or you can buy some if you like or i mean even if you don't have any graphic novels you should try it out it really helps you when you start to get you know tired of reading the book you might be in the middle of reading the book and you just kind of slowed your pace so now you're just like moving along really slowly you might want to pick up a graphic novel that's something you could read in an hour or 30 minutes depending on how long the graphic novel is and it might jump start your engine back up you know so just try that a recommendation of a good graphic novel that i read which was my first graphic novel that i read and i really did like it is witches by scott snyder and i would recommend this book i recommend this book all the time when it comes to graphic novel because i really love this it, i did read it for halloween year before last it was really i read it last year too i think no i didn't i didn't read it last halloween but year before last i did read it and i just i love all the graphics in it it's very beautiful it's it's very beautiful and it's very creepy it definitely fulfills its aspect of being creepy and scary so this is always a good graphic novel that i recommend to anyone you know wanting to read a graphic novel i think you guys should pick this up as a recommendation and if you don't like it that's fine but it's really something i think that a really jump start trend most people really do like this i haven't seen too many people that say they didn't like this at all i really did like it so definitely go ahead and try it out and if you don't it's cool come back and tell me what you didn't like about it we can discuss the fifth and final thing that i think you can do to escape a reading stomp of sars is to avoid burnout because once you burn out that it is going to catch you it's going to kill you it's going to eat you alive the the best tip i can say to avoid burnout is stop trying to read as much as other people it's not a competition and i think that goes on a lot in the booktube community because oh this booktuber reads six books a month or this booktuber reads four books a month this booktuber might read four books in one week every week don't, you can't worry about how much other people read because then you try to force yourself to keep up with their pace when you're really not keeping up with your own pace. And that means you're going to be reading books you don't like, you're going to be rush reading books, and you're not going to remember what the ha half of what happened in a book. And then you're not going to enjoy your reading experience. You know, it's not a competition about who can read more books in a month. And I think a lot of booktubers forget about that. And a lot of people in general forget about it. They feel like, well, she's, well, oh my gosh, she's reading 12 books in a month. I only read one book this month. That's terrible reading. It's not because that's your pace. It doesn't matter. I, I don't feel bad when I read one or two books a month because shit, everyone knows life happens. Outside of reading books and outside of booktube, life happens. You have work. You have bills to pay. You have family. You have friends. You're not going to just sit down and read a book from sunup to sundown. You know, life happens. I don't read every day. So it's not... For me to say that I would read every day would be a lie. I don't read every day. Now, a good majority of the week I do read. I might read maybe like maybe four times out of the week or five times out of the week, mostly four. I don't read every day, and that's okay. If you're only reading a book a month or two books a month, that's fine. I mean, shit, if you're reading ten books a month, then great, that's you, you know? But a majority of the people that be reading 10 books and 12 books a month, majority of their reads be graphic novels. I mean, but that's, not, I mean, it's not an issue. You know, what you read, what you read, you don't have to keep up with other people's pace. You have to stay with your own pace. It's not a competition. I mean, if you read one book this month and that was a bomb ass book and you can re recommend that and people that watch your channel read that book and I go, yeah, she was right. That was fire. That was a fire ass book. Then kudos for you. You did really freaking good. I mean, that's great compared to, oh, oh my god, I read 10 books this month, but 6 out of 10 of those books were trash. You see what I'm getting at? 
it doesn't matter how many books someone else is reading. You have to keep up with your pace. So you're going to burn yourself out just constantly reading and reading and reading. I mean, after I finish a book, I do take a break a day in between me picking up another book just to get my mind right. Because after I finish a book, I'm still kind of still focused on that book. And the day after that, I don't read anything. I just kind of let my mind reset itself. And then I'll pick up a book, you know, two days later. So I don't pick up pick up a book right after I put one down. I give my mind, a you know, a break. Otherwise, I'm going to burn out. I'm going to be tired of reading. It's going to be forever before I pick up a book. And I'm going to be going through this month where I read one book. And then knowing I wanted to read more books, or I just read one book, or I didn't even finish one book. Or I read a book, but it was trash. You know, I get in my feelings, you know, when I start to burn out. So that's a great way to escape a reading slump of source. Avoid your burnout, okay? So, you guys, that is my video on how to escape a reading slump of source. I really hope I helped you guys out there with my tips. And I know a lot of people do videos on how to escape, you know, a reading slump, but I just thought that I wanted to make it kind of fun and like be really realistic with it and not just tell you, oh, well, just read more books because that helps you when you're in a slump, just pick up something else. That doesn't always help. I know if I don't feel like reading and I force myself to read, it's only going to hurt me more. So those are just some other tips besides you know making yourself read more that could possibly help you with your reading song because i know they work for me so thank you guys for watching my video and don't forget to like share and subscribe and i will see you guys next time bye